Guess what time it is, everybody? Time to work on the 1200U. everybody thanks for watching my videos if you're new to the channel this is my eight year long sunny truck project or that's 1200 ute project depending on what country you're from some people call it a 1200 ute some people call it a sunny truck just want to give a quick update slash damage report of where I'm at with the car now that I've taken it for its first really long drive I've driven the car for about two and a half hours to a car show and two and a half hours back. If you want to see that video, go back to my previous um, post and you'll see the uh, car show video. I highly suggest watching that one. So what I've got here is um, a good friend of mine told me to get one of these kits. It's a radiator fill kit. It comes with a bunch of these adapters. Um, and it has, as you can see, a fitting to go on uh, where the radiator cap goes. So what my plan is, since the car is overheating slightly, what I've been told is that I might have some air trapped in my system, that it might not necessarily be a problem with the radiator or the fan. The first thing that I'm going to try, I'm going to try refilling this and leaving it partially full and letting the system bleed out the air as the engine runs. The air will bubble up and kind of evacuate from the system. Number two is I noticed down here there's an issue with the idler arm. The video's a bit dark, but there's the idler arm. I have a spare one here and I'll show you. This is the idler arm and I believe the one I have installed is a left hand drive one and then this is the right hand drive one and I think the mounting is too far this way or too far that way I think that's actually too far that way and what's happening is this nut is actually hitting on my engine cross member so that's problem number two that I'm gonna have to address the tire is rubbing a lot um, somewhere. I suspected it was here, but I don't really see any indication. I need to take the wheel off and verify if I've got any rubbing. I don't think it's rubbing in here. It could be, but I'm going to investigate that further. Um, is I've got some oil leaks. These are old oil leaks, but um, I have had this under for a long time, so it looks a lot worse than it actually is. But you can see, let's see here. There's some leaking right there on the transmission. There's some leaking at the front of the transmission. The sump plug I did fix. Um, so I got to investigate what's happening there. I also seem to be throwing some oil at that output shaft and that's got me really curious so I'm wondering if as I go up and down bumps like that that the yoke might be coming in and out and maybe there's a little bit of oil getting thrown up onto the car like that that's a little bit of an issue I'm not sure exactly if that's the cause or not so that's something I'm going to investigate further I have a new output shaft seal so I'll see if that one is damaged in any way. Maybe I damaged it putting it in, which is something that I've been told is very easy to do. Custom tail shaft, and that's a custom mount that I made out of uh, 240Z and B210 parts that I kind of made my own creation there because the stock mounts, as you know from, if you've been following me, uh, 
on the forums that they were cut off by the previous owner, so I had to make my own. The exhaust could also be looked at. Um, it is hitting, you know, you can see the area where it's damaged slightly, so that's, that's problem number five. Problem number four, oil leaks. Problem number three, the tire rubbing. And then problem number two is the idler arm. Problem number one is the radiator, which I think is the biggest issue. So another slight little annoying problem is up there is my room light, which currently has the cover off. Every time I connect a bulb, I blow a fuse down there. So there's something I wired wrong there. Um, I need to investigate that. Back in 2011, I did a custom wiring on one of those and I need to look at my research of what I did back then because I figured it out back then. Uh, it would be nice to have like one of those cargo bars. I had one before that was like, I guess they use it for drywall and um, it's just a locking bar. Um, I gotta find out where to get one of those again. El Cheapo tail lights, didn't I warn you guys that those were crap? Well, they are crap. Um, they vibrated and broke. Um, they don't seal very good. So, and the paint is actually, actually starting to age a little bit. It was very white back in April when I first got it painted. It's now uh, closing in on the end of July. And I'm actually noticing the cream color come through a little bit more and the white kind of be less white, if that makes sense, um, with the original paint job. This is actually part of the original paint job here. For whatever reason, the guys at Mako didn't do that part. And you can tell that that's a bit more creamier than this part, which is whiter. That's the new paint, which kind of bothered me a little bit, not too bad. I mean, old paint from 2008 or something, when the last person painted the engine bay. I didn't paint the engine bay. Um, the previous owner did but I did put everything you see in here um, after that fact look forward to my upcoming uh, photo montage video I'm gonna do a complete photo montage video of everything from back when I bought the car in 2011 until now 2021 Watching everybody, I got big plans coming up. I'll do another video with some other plans I got for the car. This one was really much more about a damage report, so to speak, and where I'm at with uh, actually testing the car, driving the car, because it's one thing to build the car, it's another thing to drive it and actually discover some of these issues, which I was uh, quite honestly not expecting. I was expecting some issues, but I wasn't expecting the overheating problem, the idle or arm being a problem, but you find these things out as you go. Fingers crossed, nothing else is major. Uh, and we keep uh, going with the project, so thanks everybody for watching. Stay tuned.